McDonald's began running a competition where Monopoly stickers were attached to many of its products. If you found the right stickers, you could win prizes. Most of these were simple items like a free Big Mac or soda, but there were also a smaller amount of high value prizes you could win like cars, vacations, or even the grand prize of a million dollars. It was a fun lottery that definitely helped increase sales at McDonald's. But it just so happened that a former policeman and a member of an Italian crime family managed to rig the entire game and steal millions of dollars. You see, McDonald's had hired an impartial third party company to manage the promotion, so that McDonald's themselves would not have any control over who actually won the prizes. The chief of security for this third party company was a former cop called Jerome Jacobson, who was responsible for distributing the winning stickers to stores across America. When Jerome was transporting the winning stickers, they were already in an envelope with a tamper-proof seal, and he was accompanied by a chaperone, so in theory, there was no way he could steal them. However, due to a mistake with their supplier, one day Jerome received some of these tamper-proof seals to his personal address instead of the company address. Jerome realized that he could essentially open the sealed envelope containing the winning stickers, switch them for different low value stickers, then reseal the envelope using these tamper proof seals he'd received, thus leaving no evidence behind that he'd just stolen the winning pieces. He simply had to go to the bathroom so that the chaperone with him couldn't see what he was doing, then make the swap over there and come out as if nothing had happened. Now of course, even though he was able to steal the stickers, Jerome couldn't just redeem the winning stickers himself. That would be extremely obvious he'd stolen them. So, he started selling them to people he knew. For example, he sold one winning sticker to his brother-in-law and another to his local butcher. In exchange, they gave him a cut of the prize money once they'd redeemed it at the McDonald's store where Jerome was supposed to have delivered it. Jerome made some good money from this. However, the operation went to a whole new level when Jerome met an Italian mobster called Jerry Colombo. Jerome and Jerry struck up a partnership, where Jerry would sell the tickets to his connections in the Colombo crime family and their associates. So Jerome began stealing more and more winning McDonald's Monopoly stickers, gave them to Jerry, who would then sell them off to his network. And for years, McDonald's and the general public were completely unaware that millions of dollars of prizes were in fact going to organized criminals. For Jerome, everything was going perfectly, up until Jerry Colombo died in a car accident. With his main partner in crime now gone, Jerome cut ties with the Colombo family, and many suspect this was ultimately Jerome's undoing. You see, in the year 2000, the FBI got an anonymous tip to look into the McDonald's Monopoly Prize winners. When they did, the FBI noticed that some of the winners were related. They didn't have the same surname, but it was still a very odd coincidence. So they dug deeper and found that even though the prizes had been claimed all across the US, the majority of winners seemed to be actually living in Jacksonville. Clearly something was going on. There were millions of dollars at stake here. So the FBI contacted the heads of McDonald's who wanted to stop the game immediately when they heard the news. But instead, the FBI convinced them to run the promotion one final time so they could do an undercover operation. And thus, when the next million dollar winner claimed his reward, a man named Michael Hoover, the FBI approached him pretending to be a film crew and asked him some questions about which store he'd got the winning sticker from. Of course, he hadn't actually got the sticker from a McDonald's store. He'd got it from Jerome. But right after the undercover agents left, Michael made a phone call in which he mentioned Jerome's name and literally said they bought it, all of them. So he was bragging about how his lies had worked. Completely unaware, he hadn't really spoken to a film crew. But instead, undercover FBI agents who had wiretapped him and were now hearing everything he was confessing over the phone. The FBI now had concrete evidence and they swooped in. In total, 50 people were convicted in association with this scam, with the main leader Jerome pleading guilty and having to pay back all the millions of dollars he'd stolen, along with a three year jail sentence. However, Jerome had run this scam from 1988 to 2001, and by the time they were caught by the FBI, McDonald's had already paid out $24 million to illegitimate winners. Not just that, because the big prizes had been paid out to scammers, real McDonald's customers had missed out on the prizes. So McDonald's gave away around $25 million to random customers to try and make up for this. They also paid $16.6 .6 million in illegal settlements. In total, the scammers cost McDonald's over $65 million. But the real losers were all the customers who'd been participating in the contest hoping to win prizes, unaware they couldn't possibly win them, as most of the big prizes were being illegally given to the mafia and their connections.